We'll be using the HSO module on our Productivity 2000 to control the carriage motion on this linear slide in our demos. Before we can do any of that though, we need to configure the HSO module. So we'll do that in this video and then we'll show how to use all the ladder logic motion commands in separate videos. Under Hardware Configuration, Auto Detect All the Hardware. Looks like we have a Productivity 2550 controller and two High Speed Output or HSO modules in this base. Now just double click on an HSO module to configure it. We have three tabs, one for module level stuff and one for each of the two high speed output channels. Under module setup we can give the module a name. This option automatically detects and verifies the module and if someone yanks the module out while it's running it will generate an error and it will switch the CPU to stop mode. If you want to be able to hot swap the HSO module and not generate an error and not shut down the CPU, then select this option. We're going to use two of the HSO inputs for button presses, so we'll give those names, and we'll use two more for proximity sensors that we'll use for limit switches. We won't need any outputs for our demos, but this is where you would assign them if you did. We do want to be able to read module status, so let's assign tags to those. Now when we try to go to channel 1 setup, the Productivity Suite software reminds us that we need to define all those new tags. This looks good so I'll hit OK. I really love that the software does all of that work for me. Let's give the channel a name. Now this is my favorite part of the HSO configuration. Instead of dealing with pulses for everything, I can select inches and tell the HSO how many pulses we need for one inch of travel. Now one rotation of the screw on the linear slide we're using moves the carriage 0.5 inches. And I've already preset the drive to generate 2,000 pulses per rotation. So I know it takes 4,000 pulses to move the carriage 1 inch. Well look, everything in the entire project is now in inches. I never have to use pulses again when using channel 1 on this HSO module. This automatic scaling of the pulses makes your programming life so much easier. You can also use these other standard units or if you don't like any of those, create your own. It's very flexible. I will want to be able to specify fractional inches, so let's select this option. I see the system will limit me to plus or minus about 2,000 inches of travel. That's way more than the 24 inches we need, so we're in great shape. We will want a little more accuracy than this, so let's change that. You can specify the time units you want to use. Seconds works fine for us, of course, but maybe you need revolutions per minute. Again, the beauty of scaling is it puts everything in real physical units you can understand, which as you will see in the other videos, makes your programming life much easier. We do want to be able to monitor the real time position, velocity and status. We'll be using pulse and direction and you can even specify a delay between direction changes. For us, increasing pulse count will be the positive direction, but if we need to flip it, we could just check this one. This backlash compensation issues this number of pulses at this rate on a direction change. This is for when you know you need extra pulses to account for the slop in your lead screw when changing direction. These extra pulses do not affect the real time position status. The starting velocity allows you to expedite accelerations. Instead of accelerating from the current velocity, the velocity will jump by this amount and then start accelerating. Now make sure your system can handle that sudden jump if you use this. We want to accelerate from the current velocity, so we'll leave this at zero. You'll normally want to set this to the maximum velocity your system can handle. In our demo, this linear slide can do up to 15 inches per second, so we put a 15 here. Again, notice that I don't have to figure out how many pulses that is. The software automatically does that for me because of that scaling that we set up earlier. I want to be able to get to that maximum velocity in half a second, so I'll double that number and put a 30 here, and also for deceleration. For all of these, if I specify a velocity or an acceleration that's out of bounds, I want to know about it, so I'll leave this at stop move. You could have the software automatically limit you to the max, but then you don't know if you've coded something wrong. We're using a linear slide in our demos, so we don't need to worry about rollover, but if you have a rotary device, you might want to use this so your position automatically rolls over to zero at whatever position you put here. We're using proximity sensors on this slide to detect end of travel, and we put those on inputs 5 and 6. 
Those proximity sensors present themselves as normally open contacts, so I'll leave that set like this. You can also use position limits. We don't really need those because we have the proximity sensors, but I'm going to specify them anyway so we can use them during our demo. The cool thing we'll show you is you can modify these on the fly while your program's running. That's what this double arrow means. So instead of putting an absolute number in here, we use a tag so we can modify it in our ladder code later. Channel 2 is the exact same thing. We'll leave that empty for now. Just remember that it's completely independent from Channel 1. It can have its own units, its own custom setup, etc. Nothing about Channel 1's configuration affects the operation of Channel 2, and vice versa. They are completely independent, which is another awesome feature of the Productivity Series High Speed Output Modules. And as always, make sure you're using the most recent version of the Productivity Suite software and firmware in all the modules. You can download the most recent Productivity Suite software for free right here, and the firmware for all the modules is here in this all-in-one file. To update the firmware for the modules, just go to Check and Upgrade Firmware, browse to that firmware file you just downloaded, and you instantly see a list of all modules that are upgradable. Highlight any module or modules you wish to upgrade and click Upgrade. Easy. If you need any help configuring your HSO module, please contact AutomationDirect's free, award-winning tech support team during regular business hours. They'll be happy to help. And don't forget the forums. There are lots of folks there that love to share their years of experience. Just don't post any questions directed at AutomationDirect support staff there. They don't monitor the forums on a regular basis.